Hello again, hello, and welcome to episode three of my Kerbal Space Program series here on YouTube. Um, and what you're looking at, you can hardly see it here. I tried to make it as best as possible. Is this ship that I stranded out here in space? Uh, this was supposed to be a rescue ship. And now it kind of needs rescuing, but I'm going to see if I can push it. We've got, we do have good old Jebediah here, and he's a strong guy, so we're going to see if we can push it this 55 meters per second and get a landing out of this thing. Um, so I'm getting set up now to do just that. I was just checking my electric charge. Still have quite a bit of electric charge, so that's good. Even more than I probably needed. Um... <clears throat> And that is hard to close. There we go. So, I'm going to get this ship lined up on the marker. And then we're going to speed up time. Get closer to Apoapsis. And that's... Um, <clears throat> the reason we're doing that at this point is because it'll take less energy to bring the Periapsis down if we do it from the Apoapsis. Um... So that's good. And we're just going to try and get it down to 45 kilometers and hope that's enough. It should be enough to uh, catch us in the atmosphere and land. So let's uh, speed up time. I'll stop running my mouth. <laughs> and we'll get over here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about here is when I'm going to start pushing. Somewhere before the node. And you're about to see what I mean by pushing. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is exit the ship. That's good. We're getting a little sunlight here, so we'll be able to see what we're doing. I'm going to exit... And we're going to use the, the jetpack. Oh, that's nice. We have a good view while we're, while we're pushing. Good view of the moon. We've got the sun behind us. <clears throat> Being lined up here. We're just going to shove. <laughs> and we're going to keep an eye on our jetpack propellant. Make sure we have plenty to, to re-enter the ship after we get done pushing. <clears throat> and this is fun. Uh, Jeb gets to collect a little bit of data on, on the underside of the... Uh, engines here as well so that's good double checking while he's pushing you know double checking the landing struts condition and so on everything looks good <clears throat> it would be it would be absolutely amazing if this sort of thing happened in real life Going to just make sure that we. Uh, hopefully, this will be enough. I'm hoping I'll only have to push once. All right. So now we'll re enter our ship here. And see where we're at. Still says 55. Why? Let's see what our periapsis is. <clears throat> 105. 
That's not... That doesn't seem right. Did the, did the pushing even do anything? I have no idea. We're going to try this again. Um, try it again right now. And I'm going to turn this so it's easier to get back in. Alright. EVA. Let's go for another push. This is incredibly exciting, I know. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully, I'm hoping this will work. If not, I'm going to have to send a rescue mission for the rescue mission. And that's incredibly embarrassing. I don't want to have to do that if I can avoid it. Plus, I mean, this is Jebediah, so... Jebediah should be able to figure this stuff out. <clears throat> I think that these pods should come with an emergency uh, decoupler on them. I think that would be beneficial. It's It's actually... That, it, that would make it easier for me to push, number one. Number two, um, I find myself in a situation where I need to, I would like to be able to decouple the pod um, after the fact, as an afterthought. But um, not often enough that I would want to actually use a decoupler on the pod. All right, let's get back in and hope we've done something here. And I would take an EVA report, but I think I already have one stored here, so that's fine. That's enough EVA reports. So let's see where we're at for our periapsis. 95,000. Um, so let's, we're going to go around to Apple Apps and do it again. I'm going to speed up time. <coughs> This is only this has been quite the learning situation. Um it should be really effective out here and I don't know why it's actually taking so much pushing but <laughs> we'll continue pushing out here. Hopefully hopefully this will be enough. I'll start here. Yeah, we're still good. Point it. Retrograde. EVA. And we'll go for another push, and hopefully this will bring us low enough. It... I feel like it should, so we'll, we'll try. Nope. Get online. There we go. One more good push from Jebediah, hopefully. And, um, I'm not sure, I think that maybe I should, I have earned enough money that I can go for a strictly, a strictly science mission um in the next round so i may not even use a contract and just try and gain some science uh, i do need i need to unlock some parts so i'm not sure what that would should be though i'm trying to think i don't believe i have enough i may have enough to do a moon mission we may do the moon mission contract that would get us quite a bit of science if I could take some instruments with me so we, we may try that
Come on, Jebediah. All right, let's see where we're at. And 85,000. No, let's push one more time quickly. Come on. And I don't know what the exact number is um, that you have to get to. But we may be good. I don't know what this I don't know what this is gonna take me down to. Uh but it is working slowly, so that is good. It it should work eventually if I have patience. So n now I'm asking you as a viewer to also have patience as I push this ship, embarrassingly push this ship with my jetpack. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's fun, it's fun. I'm thinking... I may be low enough if I get it if I can get it to just catch the atmosphere. I don't think I'm I don't think I'm moving fast enough to or I will be moving fast enough to cause it to skip off at this height. So that that should be hopefully good. I don't know, we'll see. We may have to go around one more time. One thing I kind of wish they would do is is um, make the jetpack use monopropellant because all of the pods come now come with monopropellant, I believe. Um, so that would be that would be interesting to to have a limitation to this. Currently, there is no limit to the amount of jetpack fuel you get. I think so. It's probably coming soon, though, or eventually. But yeah, we still have 10 monopropellant here, so. And we haven't used any out of this pod either. Um, so let's see where we're at for periapsis 76,000. I think we go around one more time and, and that should be good. <coughs> so embarrassing. I don't think we're going to actually, we can check it here, but I don't think we're actually going to hit any atmosphere at 76,000. No, we didn't. It's a good test, though. It's a very good test. So when I get about here again, I'm going to get out and push. This should be a really good push here. This should about do it for us, maybe. Okay, we're lined up. EVA. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, it would be nice to have it limited, but I think... Maybe, so say for example, I don't think it should be even because monopropellant, um, <clears throat> for pushing a ship compared to push, pushing a Kerbal is a lot less. So <clears throat> I think maybe, <coughs> maybe to recharge your jetpack, you would use one unit of monopropellant or something to fully recharge it to five or two units or something like that. Or maybe it could be just uh, half 
Um, so 2.5 units of monopropellant would recharge a jetpack as EVA propellant, maybe. That would might be a good ratio. Because <clears throat> it is good to be able to recharge your jetpacks. And maybe they could make it so that you could eventually upgrade your jetpack to a um, um, yeah, maybe you could have a jetpack that used ion thrusters or something. Um, so a, a tank of xenon would last you just forever for those really, really extended missions like at space stations where you would be doing a lot of EVA. And then you could have, you could even have a solar charger on your helmet. So that would be two upgrades that you could go for. And that might be a good mod idea, I don't know. Extended EVA mode. And board! And let's see. 67,000. One more good push, I think, and we're gonna be golden. Let's, uh, EVA. I would, I really love Kerbal Space Program mods, and I'm really excited to see where they go in the future. Um, that is one really good reason to be playing Kerbal Space Program, um, now and in the future. It's going, I think it's going to be really, really good. Even, even more than it is already really, really good. Uh, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see what comes of this game. It's already fantastic, so. Um, so my, my plan with this, this playthrough is to get pretty far, um, pretty far with this uh, in vanilla Kerbal mode and then maybe start to look at some mods as they get updated. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Just kind of playing it by ear. <clears throat> I do hope that everyone is enjoying these, these videos as well. I'm, I'm having a whole lot of fun making them. And I'm looking forward to doing some video editing, hopefully, uh, at some point. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. So I, uh, it's a lot of fun, though. It's a lot of fun making these videos, as well as um, doing the live streaming. So here we are. This should make us good. This should make us good. Let's get back in. Please be good. It's far more than my one or two push initial um, estimate. But uh, where's our periapsis? 58,000. Let's ride that and see if it pulls us down. We'll watch it from this angle here. Um, so we're at a hundred thousand now. Hopefully, fifty-eight thousand will do it. We're at seventy thousand. Okay, at sixty-eight or sixty-nine thousand is when you start to hit atmosphere. So. Um, 68,000 something, I think, is the number. I forget. I knew it at one point. This is good. We're going to get down there pretty good, I think. Hopefully. Hopefully we're going to catch enough, enough atmosphere to put us onto the ground.
Yeah, we're not even at the lowest point yet, so we're slowing down a little bit here. Let's see. Um, man, I don't know if this is going to work. We may have to go around and push one more time. It would eventually, it would eventually land, though. Yeah, we're not catching enough atmosphere. We're going to skip off, I think. Let me speed it up. Yeah, we're going back up now. Yep, we're going to have to push it, push it again. That's fine. <clears throat> It'll be okay. We can push again. So we just sort of skipped off the at, just the barely at the edge of the atmosphere. We've skipped off. <clears throat> um. Yeah, Jebediah looks excited though. He likes the pushing part, so he'll get to do that again. All right, so we'll speed up. Come around and give it another good push, and that should be good enough. Hopefully, this is um, this is a, a very becoming a very long video for for one one ship. <clears throat> okay, let's get out and push Jebediah. Let's do this. Wait. Nope, get back in. Are we even lined up? We are. Okay. Get out. Let go. If you um if you guys have any suggestions for mods that you'd like to see me use, uh I am open to suggestions. It's been a while since I've played Kerbal with mods. Um a lot of them have been very much updated uh, since uh, I last used them. Uh, but I do want to use, I believe I want to use Interstellar. And I do want to use uh, Kethane or Kethane, however you wish to pronounce it, is okay with me. And um, <clears throat> not sure, I really like Kerbal Attachment System. But I don't like the things it does to my ships sometimes. So, um, maybe Kerbal Attachment System. It can be very beneficial. Um, yeah, so uh, put your suggestions in. I do not want to use MechJab. I don't want to use anything that's going to be kind of cheaty. Um... But it's going to be interesting to see how these mods update along with the contract uh, uh, missions now. I, th I think that some of them won't be affected too much, really. But we'll see. <clears throat> of course, there are mods like B9 Aerospace and stuff like that. For making planes and eventually space planes. I'd like to try to attempt. <clears throat> make an attempt at some sort of SSTO. Um, in vanilla in this playthrough as well at some point. Obviously not now. I have no parts hardly. So let's get back in and see where our periapsis is. 48,000. Let's give it one more push for good measure. We don't want to, we don't want to have this thing run <laughs> for like multiple episodes, so let's get this done. I should have just sent another rescue rocket up, but that's okay. I don't want to leave this ship in, in orbit. That's, that's the whole deal. That's most of the reason I'm doing this right now. I don't want to leave this ship in orbit. Um, cause it's very valuable to my, um, my, uh, space program right now. 
recovering these parts. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, this feels like a really, really good push. This should be it. This should definitely get it so that we land on the next come around here. Almost there, almost there. All right, let's get back in. I am growing impatient with this whole whole ordeal here, but it's um pretty necessary, I think. 40,000, that should be good. Let's hope so. Cross your fingers. I'll know if you're not actually crossing your fingers out there, so... Cross your fingers, and hopefully Jebediah will return safely to the planet. <clears throat> Speed up more. What does this look like? My goodness. That is interesting, isn't it? Looks like it's going to be a splashdown. But uh, funnily enough, the space center is like right there. I believe I believe that is the space center right there. So that's interesting. Uh, it would be it would be incredibly lucky if we landed at the space center at this point. But I don't think we will. We're gonna. I don't know. It is dropping pretty hard right now. But no, I, I don't think we will. We're definitely gonna fly over the space center. And do some sort of a water, some sort of a water landing. Yeah, moving too fast still. But we are slowing down enough that I don't think we're going to have to go for another push. Yep, there's the Space Center. We can see it. Hello! <clears throat> if I could speak Kerbal, I would have at that point. And we should do things that somewhat, somewhat correctly here. Do I have, I do have this. We could do this, observe this. We'll keep that data. And I already have a crew report, don't I? Yeah. Yep, we are coming in for a landing. We'll open up the landing gears anyway. Could be useful. One thing I've noticed... Um, I'm about to open the parachutes here. We're coming in fast. <clears throat> uh, one thing I've noticed with... Um, oh, that's why we're coming in fast. Wow. I had the physics time warp on. No wonder. Uh... But what I was going to say, one thing I've noticed with using landing gear in water, sometimes you get lucky and just the landing gear pops off and the rest of the ship is fine. So that's what I'm hoping for here. Two hundred meters to go. Getting ready to slow down the time warp. Almost there. Almost. Splashdown. Hey, that was, um... Yeah, that was pretty good. You know what we're going to do? We're going to get as much science as we can here. Let's see. Uh, we'll keep that. See if we can turn the ship. Let's do, um... Do as much science as we can at this point. EVA report? Not needed. 
Um, I wonder if we can take a sample. Yeah, that'll be good. 12 signs. Okay, let's get back in and recover the vessel. Mission success. 100% successful mission. Okay, probably not 100%. We gained 23 science from that mission, uh, from that ship. Uh, we got 6,000 funds back. That is excellent. And of course, we got Jebediah back for a reputation gain. Very nice. A little bit of work out there in space, but very nice. We can also unlock something here in our science listing. Um, I kind of want to be sure that I unlock th this, you know, each subsequent uh, row of science before I proceed to the next row. But I may not stick to that plan, but that's, that's the current plan. Um, so remote control stuff there. Stabilizers and struts. Um... And a bigger fuel tank. Everything, every tab has something that I want. <sighs> mm. I think I'm going to go with the strut connector tab. So let's research that. There we go. <laughs> And let's look at the mission listing. <clears throat> no active missions. We have successfully completed every mission that we've accepted so far. We've got lots of neat ones here. Testus engine orbiting Kerbin. Like, that's going to be an easy one, probably. Oh, at that particular altitude. Like, that's fine. Um... On a suborbital trajectory, test the small gear bay. <clears throat> At 70 to 74,000. That's a tight altitude number, really. Um, splash down, test. Explore the moon. Test the LV-909. In flight over Kerbin. We'll have to look at what the LV-909 is. But you have to be going pretty fast over Kerbin. At an altitude, pretty fast at a pretty low altitude. Let's see. Uh, 21 to 24. That's a lot of money for that though. Not as much as the moon exploration one. So let's look let's look at our parts listing and see if we can actually choose a moon mission with the parts that we have available. Um I have the engines that I want to use. Mmm. We do have struts now. <clears throat> we have batteries. This would be a tough mission if we were to do it. And I would want to take a science junior probably. Um, and mystery goo. I don't want to transmit any of the science at this point. I want to just go there and bring it back home. I think... I think we're about ready for a moon mission. I'm I'm debating on whether or not that is possible. The only thing I don't like is I don't have uh, larger fuel tanks for the launch stage. Um, the launch stage will be the stage that is difficult-ish. I think I could come up with something though. But that something will be in the next episode. So in the next episode, we will be doing the moon mission. 
are attempting the moon mission, at least building the rocket for it. Um, and we're, so that mission is going to be, I'll click on it real quick and we'll, we'll look at all of the objectives for that one. And that should get us some, some good science. I'm going to take lots of science stuff with me. Um, explore the moon. <clears throat> so this particular mission, we will have to orbit the moon. Um, recover scientific data from the space around the moon. That part is the easy part. Land on the moon and recover the scientific data from the surface of the moon. So we're going to try and do all of that in one flight. Uh, beginning from be beginning with the next episode. So let's go ahead and accept that contract. And thank you everyone for watching. <coughs> I'm having a blast and I hope you are too. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one.